like to start with asking you a question. Do you know that one third of food produced for human consumption is lost or wasted globally, with amounts to about 1.3 billion ton per year? I get really sad when I hear that. Um, this is something that these three companies have started to address, and I would like to introduce to you Edda Demir Westman from Opticep Technologies, Erik Månsson from Innocentia, and Philip Åkerbrom. Uh, Lilla Kaffe Hi. Hey. Hey there. Welcome. Great to have you. Thank Thanks. you. So uh, I would like to uh, first ask you a little bit about uh, your company and what you do. Uh, and could you start, please, Edda? Yes. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the given opportunity. It's very nice to be here. Uh, our company name is Opticep Technologies, which has recently changed. It used to be OptiFreeze. Uh, we have just merged with another food tech company from Lund that's called Arcroma Pure. And that's why the company name is also changed. Um, so in this new company, uh, what we are offering is superior technology to the food and plant industries. And we are offering systems, machines that can deliver results such as extended shelf life, higher quality, increased yield, less waste, energy savings, and they are easy to fit existing process lines for food and plant industries. How, how do you do that, Edda? So we, have, uh, we are working with two technologies. One of them is called vacuum impregnation, and the second one is called pulsed electric field. Yeah. These two technologies are allowing to reach the plant cells in, so we can introduce any substances inside the plant cells combining these two technologies. Uh, so it could be, you can imagine like you uh, infusing some uh, energy boosters to plants or you can infuse um, uh, substances, vitamins, minerals that you want to fortify the products. Um, the technology allows also uh, the, the, to, to speed up extraction rate for certain products, for example, olive oil extraction, or uh, you can also pasteurize uh, in, with a sh uh, short or with a low temperature with pulse electric field. So it saves a lot of energy and increase the quality of product. Oh, super. Uh, 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 are you doing this or can you do it? Uh, in, sort of, are you already doing it? Yes, in, in some, uh, some products, we have already existing lines in around the Europe, for example, oil, olive oil extraction and for fruit juices. But when it comes to uh, shelf life extension, or we can call it base life extension, we are more focusing on, at the moment, focusing more on cut flowers to extend their uh, base life. Mm -hmm. And we have an existing line in Sweden, and you can find the, uh, it's called OptiBoost treatment. OptiBoost treated flowers, today you can find it uh, Ika Maxi Westerhamnen and... Oh. Uh, Great. I live next door, so I'll go and check it out. Uh, I would like just, uh, I will hear more about it from you, Edda, but uh, Erik Månsson from Innocentia, could you please tell us a little bit about Innocentia? Yes, of course. Uh, hi, Karin. Thanks for, for inviting us. And um, my name is Erik. I'm the CEO of a company called Innocentia. And, and we work also with, with, sh with shelf life, but um, in comparison to what Edda is talking about, about shelf life extension, which is super, super interesting. We are working more with shelf life um, unlocking, as we call it. Um, basically, we are uh, developing now labels that can indicate the status of the food within the package. And, and um, we're, we're trying to create an alternative to the current best before dates and, and different types of expired dates that we are using that are quite conservatively set and set with large safety margins, uh, which means that when the product reaches the expiry date, it usually isn't bad. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a date that we need to set uh, when we calculate the, and, and sort of an um, uh, yeah a, a life for 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 a great batch of, of, of products. Uh, so for a single product, there are there are generally twenty to thirty percent more days in the package that that could be used. And if we can know that as a, as a consumer, uh, we can actually use it because unfortunately we don't really trust our senses today. So uh, 
Um, have you started doing this? Are you sort of, have you gone live? <laughs> uh, no, not yet, but we huh? are planning for our first pilots now, actually, with some major retailers and, and, and meat producers. We're working mainly with, with fresh meat at this point. So um, by the end of this year, hopefully we can, uh, we will launch our, our first pilots, which mm. is uh, super, super interesting. And, and, mm. uh, and I feel that you perhaps you could do stuff together as well. Uh, Philip Åkerbrom from Lilla uh, Café Rostelidet. Uh, can you tell me a little bit what you're doing? Yeah, we're working together with producers. Uh, like a roastery is like in between the consumer and uh, the people working, serving coffees and the farmers. So what we're trying to do is uh, helping the farmers to create new products, uh, working together with them. So before they have like only one product to sell and they were like, against the uh, weight and price and going on the markets with stock markets and uh, pushing mm -hmm. down so things like fair trade and uh, these kind of stamps going on the bags instead of see how they can get more money mm -hmm. and uh, it's not only about uh, how the value and the quality of the products but also to diverse the product and use the whole seed so like it's a cherry uh, and we are using the the, the seed in the cherry but also now we're helping the farmers to also use the the skin on mm -hmm. and the, like the the fruit to create products out of the skin instead of just like using it as fertilization. Uh, so uh, today we're like uh, creating uh, products uh, with the whole. Uh, we're using the whole uh, fruit mm -hmm. instead of just using the seeds, and also trying to see it from a like a holistic point of view where uh, creating not only roasted coffee, but also like brewed coffee and where we're using the rest material to create new products. So from the coffee grounds, we're uh, growing mushrooms on the coffee grounds and create products out mm -hmm. of that. And then also uh, we're mixing the rest, like from the roasting, we get fibers as a rest product and we blend that into the, the coffee grounds to uh, to grow the mushrooms so we're trying to take all the parts from the, the whole, whole chain exactly mm. and create new products and, and where, where are you doing this are you doing this with a couple of farmers or or yeah today we're like we are working with four farmers today uh from all over the world but uh, usually with the the farms where you have the longest relationships so we've been uh, roasting coffee for 15 years in sweden and uh, we started the first relationships like 12 years ago. So uh, are they interested? Yeah, they're like some of them have been really famous because of this uh, diversity and quality exchange of uh, showing coffee can be uh, like uh, a product that you can get more money from. Just not like put your school to uh, put your kids to school or get food on the table, but you can actually improve your whole farm mm -hmm. by getting more money by increasing the quality and getting more products from the farm. Super interesting. I think we have like three different perspectives on how we can work with, with saving uh, the food and, and making it last and not throwing it away. Uh, Edda, what would you need? Uh, what does your company need to sort of grow now? What, what is it? Is it money? Is it more competence? Is it the first customer? What is it? I think um, when it comes to some applications, we have like for fresh cut fruits, vegetables, shelf life extension, we need the first customers. And of course, preferably in Sweden, because it's always easier to work with the closed companies. Uh, we need the brave and innovative um, uh, customers uh, to take the, these kinds Cons of consumers or customers. Uh, yeah, of course, it's it's the same. But first, customers needs to take this uh, this technology, and uh, sh they should be there to implement it in their existing lines. Yeah. Uh, and have you started talking to them? Is there an interest? Yes, uh, we have been around for six years uh, or seven years now, and we have had some some contacts. I can see that there is a bit of a conservative. Uh, attitude towards new technologies mm. around and we are really struggling with it but um, we have a lot of uh, interest all around Europe and also around the world both for plant applications and for uh, food applications and uh, we are right now trying to find our best sales channels 
Uh, I think that in this network, we must be able to find someone that is uh, curious enough to try this. Uh, so I think that's a, what <coughs> one thing that we have to, to have as a, a goal for today's networking. Uh, Erik, I have a question for you. How do these labels work with the meats uh, that are fresh and then freeze it? Or uh, how, do, how do they work? Uh, so basically, we, we work mostly with tray packed uh, fresh meat at the moment. So that would be minced meat or, or poultry, for example, um, chicken breast uh, or any type of, of chicken parts, actually. Um, they work if you freeze it. But, but I mean, freezing meat, for example, is one way to actually extend the shell, shelf life in itself. Uh, so so that's, that's sort of another solution. Uh, our labels are, are mostly targeted to be used with, with the fresh meat when you need to get an idea. Uh, when, when you brought it home and, and, and picking out, uh, it out of the refrigerator and actually asking yourself, is this safe to eat or not at, at that point? And, and um, uh, so, so, so um, I think they, they work uh, in relation to, to uh, or together with, with the freezing technologies that, that we have today. Mm. I understand that you had like two different uh, sort of technologies that you were looking at and one was shifting colors, right? Exactly. So we have both an analog version, as we call it, which shifts color. And then we have a digital version that can send the same information, but as a digital signal uh, to... Mm -hmm. For example, a smartphone or a bigger digital system. Um, your I chicken think, is <laughs> exactly. You can get a, yeah. get a text message from from your refrigerator that you need to cook your chicken. Um, but that's that's still a few years in 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 the future, I think. But it ties very well together with the transparency that Daniel was, was talking about, and and also the the IoT that's coming more and more in in the food industry as well. But I think the industry, and as you said, Eva, need, needs a a bit more time to it is still quite cons conservative and and they need some time to pick up on all, all of these trends uh, so that we can implement them in a in a optimal way uh, philip um whereabouts are you in your sort of process of, of uh, using that uh, chewy bit from, from the or it's perhaps it's not chew i don't know <laughs> but but the, the the thing that's around the seed yeah, like the the mucilage, uh, we call it. Uh, it's um, it's also this kind uh, of new products where you have to explain and communicate uh, what people are drinking because, like today, it's called cascara, and like uh, people don't know what it is. So that's the hardest part to when you're coming up with new products to make and explain what it is, mm. and also, uh, yeah communicate it in the right way because it's like 100 natural products it, like nothing is added and it's also like if you're looking on uh, products today that's artificial where like added caffeine and like energy drinks this is like natural caffeine and it's like natural sweetness in 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 the drink itself so it's what like does a, it, what does it taste like it's like peach uh rose hip like these kind of flavors and very sweet and acidic uh, and you can just like drink it still or you can uh, carbonize it uh, so yeah it's quite new uh, phenomena coming up in the market but nobody haven't consumed it before like so that's why mm. super interesting i would like to have some right away <laughs> um i hope that uh, everyone that's been listening to you is see how interesting companies we have in this region and i thank you very much for uh, for uh, introducing uh, our uh, our companies to us uh, and i look forward to seeing you later thank you